Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Alright, so today we're finally going to get to talk about Power Rangers Dino Charge. Because hydration is still important. Because it is a... There's a lot to be said about Dino Charge so far, even though I've only seen four episodes. Because that's all that's premiered so far. Alright, so, your basic background information. Power Rangers Dino Charge is the... 21st season of Power Rangers. Um, it's sent. It's adapted from the Kaiyu Den Sentai Kaiyu Ruger. Kaiyu Ruger. Um, it's about dinosaurs, obviously. Um, the main, the overall plot of the series is that there was this alien called Keeper, who had these ten Energems, ten or eleven. And he crash landed on Earth 65 million years ago when he was being chased by a bounty hunter named Sledge. He then gave the Energems to dinosaurs, which were the main life, life forms on the planet at the time. But then the dinosaurs went extinct. And so now, 65 million years later, we have teens who have been digging them up. So far, we only have five. But if the show holds true to its Sentai, it means by the end we'll have 10 or 11 Power Rangers on the team. This is important because no Power Ranger team has ever had that many Rangers. You have, I mean, you have teams like Jungle Fury, which has canon five Rangers and five allies. Now you say, wait, but that's, t but wait, Sarah, that's ten people. Yes, and you can obviously count better than Saban if you realize that that means there are ten people involved with their team. But, we're talking canon rangers in a series. The spirit rangers from Jungle Fury are not considered canon rangers, because if they were, then Jungle Fury would be on the list of, on the list of teams that has six rangers, and they would have three beating out, having the most six rangers beating out RPM with two. But they're not. And Camille and Jared are not considered power rangers either, because they're actually not power rangers, even though they can like morph into forms. And so, they might be considered honorary Power Rangers, canonly, but they're not considered canon Power Rangers. And the canon team is still made up of five, te te uh, five Rangers, you see that? Now, you might also, if you've seen Mystic Force, you might also say, wait a minute, Mystic Force had nine people. No, yeah, Mystic Force, you would say, wait, Mystic Force had seven people, this is also true. This is close to 10. However, you have this... However, Mystic Force, while it started out with five rangers and then followed up... T and then followed their category and then followed the path of the team with five rangers and ended up getting a sixth. Um, Udana is also not considered a canon power ranger and so she is probably considered an honorary ranger but she is probably most likely listed on a wiki as an ally. And so that's where, and so that's why Cairo, I'm using the Sentai, Dino Charge is very important because 10 Rangers on a team is a lot of Rangers. And it would be the biggest team in Power Ranger history. Um, so far, Dino Charge has really brought me back to, I say brought me back, even though I've just wa recently watched every season of Power Rangers and I'm currently re-watching them all. Um, back to the Disney era, honestly. Like, the Disney era is like the golden age of Power Rangers. I mean, after Super Megaforce and Samurai, which I love them dearly, but they had the same morphing calls, they had the same catchphrase, their Red Rangers were almost, almost carbon copies of each other. They even had, they even had this, it's just, it was insane. The, now, with Dino Charge, though, they've stopped that. Dino Charge has an original theme song, which is actually really cool, and I've listened to it, like, a thousand times since it came out, before the season even premiered. They have a different morphing call. Now, the Red Ranger is not like Troy and Jaden at all. You know, he's not some silent, strong and silent type that's kind of hard to get to know. He's really goofy and he's funny and he's kind of laid back as far as Red Rangers go. And that's really cool. 
I mean, so far, they've already broken the mold that a lot of people were complaining about because they've started to get back into the creativity that is supposed to be Power Rangers with every team being an individual thing with their own morphing calls and their own um, theme songs and their own catchphrase. Granted, Dynamite Ready to Fight is definitely something that they wrote for six-year-olds but it's definitely better than the stupid Rangers for together forever whatever thing that they used in past seasons. To give you an idea of this, in Samurai the catchphrase was Rangers together, Samurai forever, and then in Megaforce it was um, Rangers forever, Megaforce all together. So you see what I mean by the repetition? It's just, it's nice to see that they're going back to some of their creative roots like the show used to be before the Neo Saban era even started. Like, that's great. Like, you, y'all gotta step up. You gotta show that you can write Power Rangers just as well as Disney did. Because some of the most notable seasons happened during the Disney era. Now, granted, the Disney era was a lot longer than Saban's first era. But, they still did a lot. And they did, and they did well, considering the fact that they didn't really even want the franchise and kept trying to cancel it and kept not succeeding in canceling it. You know? Like, Chase, when he, I don't know if this is straight out of the Sentai, but when he is fighting his first monster, when he finds his energy, not Chase, whoever the Green Ranger is, I forget his name, I'm, I'm new with names so far, he's protecting his dog, like, literally, and, like, he's just trying to protect his dog because the monster was going to kill it, and I was like, oh no, the puppy, and then he shows up and saves his puppy, and I was like, yes, the puppy is safe, and then they ran off. You know? And then there was the part where he found a random dinosaur fossil in his, literally, like, in the woods behind his house. And I was just like, I don't know a lot about California. But I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen. So, yeah. What are my hopes for Dino Charge, you might ask? Well, my hope is that they can currently keep up the streak that they have. Which is, the characters are all really dynamic and different. And they're all really, really real is what they feel. They feel real, which is important. So I'm hoping that they can keep this up, and I'm hoping they can keep up the momentum they have right now. Right now, the momentum with the characters and the writing is pretty good, so I'm hoping that they'll be able to keep that throughout the entire season. And I'm hoping that they will adapt to the point where we will see a team of ten rangers, because granted, I love six rangers to death, but a team of ten rangers would be fabulous. But then again, but then again, when Ninja Storm was adapted, they didn't do all the Hurricanes. But then again, that was Disney. So Dino Charge is really Saban's, the Saban era's um, way to try and surpass Disney and to prove that the guy who created the show is the best one to control it and to make sure that the writing is good. And like I said, he's an executive producer, and I know executive producers don't always, may not get to do a lot. But if you're the guy who wants a franchise, I'm guessing you get to do a lot. So those are my hopes for Dino Charge. I hope that Saban can come through and show everyone that the people who wrote In Space, I heard that the same writers wrote this, wrote, it was either Lightspeed Rescue or Lost Galaxy or In Space, one of those. And those were good seasons. So I hope that they managed to keep up the momentum so far. And maybe, and hope, maybe if we're still doing videos by the time Dino Charge is over, I'll let you guys know how they did. That's all we have time for today. No clue what we're going to talk about next week, but I'll find something. Um, have a good rest of you. Have a good week, and may the power protect you all.